Hi Patricia, welcome and thanks. Um, could you tell us just what your role is? Yeah, my name is Patricia Anderson. I'm the lead clinical nurse specialist for bloodborne virus, which is HIV, hepatitis B, and hepatitis C. And we have clinics here at the Brownlee Centre. We also have clinics as part of Greater Glasgow and Clyde, which is level seven. But we also have outreach clinics as well. And we also do an inreach service to the prisons, which is Lomos. Excellent, thanks. And um, so we're here today to talk about some of the responses and how you and your the people that you work with um, providing clinical care to people affected by bloodborne viruses, how that's maybe changed over the time. So when the outbreak was first started, could you tell us a little bit about what you were seeing, what maybe some of the challenges were? So basically it started off a very small group. So we started off with 10 and we kind of started to become a bit alarmed and then it just before we knew it, within the first couple of months, there had been more people and that alerted us to the fact that previously, when we go back to the 80s, when it was the train spotting days, it was more in Edinburgh that you would be seeing HIV amongst the drug use. So that kind of alerted us to something, something's definitely going on here and what's happening. We know that there's a really good IEP in Glasgow. So it wasn't because of that. So what else was happening? Was it to do with the drugs? Was it to do with people's mindsets? Was it to do with the fact that they were coming a bit more chaotic? And sharing needles that we were unaware of. So basically, in now we're two years, nearly three years down the line, there's been 134 HIV positive people amongst people who inject drugs, which is a massive jump in numbers. So trying to get the patients or the people to come to the Brownlee Centre, and if you look at the demographics, we're in the West End here, which has always been seen the posh end of the city. You're not going to get somebody from the East End of Glasgow. One, they can't afford it, and two, it's not their priority. So we had to go out to the community. We had to send somebody out, and my colleague Claire was the one who started it off in November 2015, so three years ago just now. So basically Claire then was able to get around all the different places, find out where these people are going and why they're not coming here. So that's then we decided to set up a clinic at the Homeless Addiction Service at Hunter Street. So we started off having an appointment system, again, didn't work. So we have a kind of a drop-in service, so people come and go, and it's going really, really well. So we don't just see HIV, we're known as bloodborne virus, and the reason that we're known for that is people don't want to be labelled HIV positive. There's still a stigma attached to HIV, as much as we try and do as many campaigns and different things, and very much for, and they're very, very vulnerable people who are out in the streets. Mm. These are people who, people walk past every day, but not only the drug users, they're also HIV positive. So, you know, they, it, it's not great for them. No, multi-levels of stigma St and barriers. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, so you described some of the changes that you were making to the service and you had clear the nurse going out and doing the outreach and taking the service and that you tried the appointment system and then it became drop-in and that seems to be working well. So what are some of the successes that you're seeing with knowing that that's going well with treatment? So I think the fact that we work really well and I think we all know the Abbey Chemist is doing a fantastic job. So what, what was then working in collaboration with the pharmacists, people who are on treatment like methadone and things like that, when they're going to pick up their methadone, they also get their HIV treatment at the same time. Now this hasn't been done anywhere else, but it is working really well. So although we think, yes, they're taking their treatment, this is a, this is a different group. So we need to make sure that they're always taking their treatment. So it's okay if, if they stop and start their treatment, we don't know if they're going to build up resistance and we won't know that for a couple of years. But this is a public health issue. That's why it was really important to get them, to get this group of people immediately on treatment because prevention of onward transmission. And a lot of it, although we're talking about drugs, a lot of it's sexual as well. And I think sometimes that's ignored. Yeah. They tend to know each other within this group and they're more comfortable with each other within this group. So the sexual side of it is more likely within the group of people that they know. 
So you said was it 134 people that have been diagnosed. So what are the treatment numbers looking like? Um, treatment numbers are looking really good, but I've also got to say the numbers in this group there has been about 20 deaths. Now I know in Glasgow that there is deaths amongst drug users. Most of this is to do with the drugs and not to do with HIV, and I think that's an important issue to get across as well. A lot of these ones are just newly diagnosed. So the numbers that we're looking at just now is probably up about 95%, which is excellent mm -hmm. for this group of patients to get them on treatment. And again, like I've said, they don't always stay on treatment, but if you can get somebody started on treatment, there's different reasons why they could become homeless all of a sudden, get kicked out of their accommodation, fall out with their care manager, fall out with the pharmacist because they're stealing or whatever, and stop their medication. So it's really important that we're on top of that to know where are these people. And we've got a new nurse who's just started, but the unfortunate thing with this new nurse is she's only on a two-year contract. This isn't going to go away. So after two years, you know, what do we do? This isn't the, the group of patients that I would normally see at the Brownlee Centre who are very stabilised on their HIV drugs. These are patients who you're going to constantly be looking after for the rest of their lives. And whatever nurse is going to be around needs to be looking after them and knowing where they are. There's, there's such, that HIV is not their priority. So it needs to be our priority to help them out with it. So we've got 95% of people currently on and accessing treatment. What are some of the additional things that people might be struggling with or actually doing really well with in terms of treatment, like as side effects? Side effects aren't as bad now, but remember they've got so many other things going yeah. on. They're homeless, uh -huh. they're living in hostels, or they don't have accommodation, mm -hmm. they're begging out in the streets. Mm -hmm. So taking their HIV medication is... They'll take it because they're getting it alongside their methadone. And Hep C as well, we offer Hep C treatment. So these patients can get their, you know, their methadone, their HIV treatment and their Hep C treatment all at the one time. The Hep C can be a wee bit more difficult for them to take, although it's over a shorter period of time. But we have got, we have been very successful in treating people co-infected, which means HIV and Hep C. So people are getting the results that they're clear from their Hep yeah, C infection yeah, after yeah. a period. So that must yeah, boost yeah. them as well. Because mm -hmm. um, the treatment's a lot better for Hep C as well. So some of them are only on it for eight weeks at a time. So getting them through that eight weeks, and it's such a boost for them to know they've done it for themselves. They've got nothing else going in their life. Nobody else is telling them they're doing well. So to get them treated for Hep C is such a great achievement for them and for us as well. How about... Um, because there's a new terminology around um, HIV and treatment that we're looking for undetectable viral loads yeah. and some of the conversations about when you do have an undetectable viral load, you then are either unable or less likely to pass there's, it there's on. There's less likely to, yeah. to pass it on. Um, so, yeah, I mean, getting somebody to be undetectable is, is great because, again, from sexual point of view, from sharing needles point of view, yeah, it is... is Definitely good. And we're seeing some people getting told those messages. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah absolutely, absolutely. And it's a great achievement, like I'm saying, about clearing their hepatitis C, getting treated for that. To tell somebody they've got an undetectable viral load is really, really good. I mean, one of the, the people that one of my colleagues, Claire, sees has never been to a clinic, ever. So she sees them out in the community. So she'll do his bloods and things either at the Abbey Chemist or she'll do them at the Simon community. Mm -hmm. And that's the important thing as well is the third sector, but the Simon community have been fantastic through all of this as well. So a real partnership working, loads of changes and adaptations. Yeah. And, yeah. and it's education for them as well. They want to be involved in like the different hostels and things like that as well. City Mission, you know, going there and Although they're known as bloodborne virus nurses, you know, people may very well know what they're there for, but it's never openly discussed. What about what's next? How do you see ser the service? Do you see any adaptations going forward over the next year, two years? What what I do for me is being the manager, and I think going more out in the community. So although we're talking about this group that are HIV positive and HIV C positive, there are other people who are mono-infected. So there are HIV positive people who are not part of the, the PWID group, the people who inject drugs, who can't manage to get here as well. So, you know, maybe going somewhere 
out to some of the kind of hostels and things and having clinics there as well. So, or the drug crisis centre, that would be our plan for the future to do more outreach and maybe move further away from the traditional hospital settings. I think that's where ideal for me. And I but think I need nurses to do. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think that's been a theme from all the videos that yeah. we've been releasing um, over this series is that to deal with this or to work with this population, it's going to where they are and where they're comfortable yeah, yeah, with. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I think we've covered all the questions. Is there any additional points that you would like to make? Any thing that you're like, oh, ask me this? Or No, I don't think so. I think just to get the point across that they are doing a good job. They are doing an extremely with such a vulnerable group. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the important things is is building up trust with this group. Mm -hmm. It's not a case of just getting out there and speaking to them. You really need to get to know them. And a lot of the times that what these nurses are dealing with, like we talked about the deaths, they've got to know these people. They've got to know either their partner, some of them their families. So it's a big lot of kind of, a big ask for the nurses as well mm -hmm. to take all this on. So. Lots of relationship building relationship. and really I think, investing. I think that's the important thing. I think communication is a major, not just for these, but like I talked about the third sector, mm -hmm. getting to know who's there mm -hmm. and helping each other. And I don't think that's ever been done. I think very much it's been hospital or mm -hmm. community. And I think the fact that the, the nurses have actually went out there and bringing a hospital to the people, that's the way I kind of look at it. Mm -hmm. And building bridges and communication. That, that would be my word, communication. <laughs> Thank you so much, Patricia. Thank you. Um, yeah.